Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Carol Manning and in this video I'm going to be painting this purpley bluey pinky nepeta flower, at least I think it's a nepeta flower, that's what I've been told. So I've got my picture drawn out and I'm just rubbing out a bit of the pencil lines so they're a bit fainter so they don't show through when I'm doing the painting. So I'm putting into my palette some Windsor Violet and some Indanthrin Blue to start with. I'm using Windsor Newton Professional Paints for this and I'm starting with some very diluted paint and just getting a wash down. The reference photo for this, if you want to know, is actually one I've taken. So there will be an image at the end that you can screenshot if you wish to for use in this with this tutorial only um, likewise I will also put up my line drawing for those people that want to have a go at it alternatively I put PDFs of both photos I've taken and line drawings on my Facebook group which you'd be welcome to join so you may have noticed I've put in the middle of there a third colour which is a mixture of the Windsor Violet and the Indanthrin Blue to make a blue violet um, which I'm using also on the background colours. I've tried to leave the palettes in view where I can as I thought it would be useful for you to see what colours I'm dipping in and out of and mixing. So I'm just adding in the green stalk. I'm using sap green, diluted sap green for this. Now from the picture I'm not actually 100% sure where the stalk is. I have a feeling it's coming down from the right hand side at an angle and looping round but I'm not 100% sure but as I want this as a picture with a solo flower and a bee I decided I would put a stalk going up as it would look better as a overall image. Use an artistic license. So I'm also putting some washes on the B. I've got some diluted Windsor yellow that I'm using and just going around putting the yellow where I can see it. Very light diluted on the wings and the end of the B and some of the other bits. A little bit stronger on the mid and head section and then using some diluted lamp black to make a pale grey just to get a wash on what's going to be the black areas. I'm using a number six brush at the moment so not too small. I will be using a small brush later on. I'm just putting all the legs and the feelers see quite a lot of the legs in this picture. Can't always in some pictures but in this one you can. So I'm just putting a wash of diluted permanent rose down that middle part. If you look the stalk's quite pink and the rest of the stalks do have a little bit of pink in them as well. And then I'm going around starting to add in some of the green where I can see it in the flower. So it's still quite diluted at this stage and I say I'm going, going around the whole flower looking at where wherever I can see the green. I'm still using the sap green for this and I've switched to a smaller brush. It's a 0.4. So the rest of the flower, once I get onto the details, I am using a small brush for and it is quite long and very detailed, quite um, complex flower structure. It's one of those ones that's sort of odd shapes, it's not sort of the straightforward flower shape that you get with some.
So a little bit more of that strong Windsor yellow to the B and just putting some of the yellow into the legs as well. On this one, the end of the legs are quite light. And although the end of the bee's body is whitish, I am putting lines of yellow into that. And into the wings, because you've got the reflection from the body being picked up by the wings. Just put some magenta into the palette there and a bit of permanent rose. And this is where I start adding all the detail. So I swapped to a miniature brush at 10 stroke zero and like before I'm going around with one colour at a time. Starting reasonably light, so I've still got quite a diluted paint at the moment. And it will be a case of working my way around all these details. Obviously the top of the flower has still got the light with stalky unformed bits or buds and leaves and things at the top whereas the bottom is more the open flowers or open, beginning to open flowers I presume there probably must be a, a name for these flowers where they've got one flower that's made up of lots of little flowers I enjoy painting flowers, but I'm not a gardener. Um, I often don't know the names of them. My sister's very good at helping me out there. And I don't know a lot of the technical terms or parts of the types of flowers. I just enjoy painting them. And taking photographs of them as well. But I haven't as, I had as much time to get out and do any photography this year. So you can just see on the one I'm painting at the moment, I'm beginning to put in some of these rounded, more rounded shapes there. And it's just going to be a case of building it up, lighter, darker, putting the various colours in. I say it's a very mixed flower. It actually looks, parts of it actually look pinker in photograph on the, as I'm video doing the video editing than it did when I had it on my tablet so whether that's just the differences between the screens I'm not sure I know there's a couple of flowers there that I've done more purpley than they look in the photograph I've got on the screen at the moment I say that could just be the difference between the screens though one of the nice things about when you're photographing from real flowers rather than photographs because you can actually know what the real colour is rather than how the screen's distorting it or how accurate, accurately the screen is showing it. So if you look at the side you can see that I'm dipping between different colours as I said I've tried to leave the palettes visible where possible so you can see which colours I'm using and I'm often dipping in and out of more than one so I'm beginning to put some of the darker values in and beginning to put the shapes in I've outlined, I will as, as this goes along you'll see me outline a lot of it to be able to make 
clear distinction between the different parts of the flower. So if you are a gardener and you know what the term is for a flower that's made up of lots of different flowers, please leave me a comment on in the comments area then perhaps I'll be able to develop my knowledge of flowers a bit more. So there's lots of little lines and markings on this flower, sort of the vein lines and just marking lines as well. So adding those in and also shading lines. Some of the darker values are where the shadows are, so it's important to add those in. So it is a case of just going around carefully putting in the outlines, the markings, the shading. So at the moment I'm focusing using the Windsor Violet, which is a purpley colour. I said I'm using Windsor and Newton Professional paints for this, but if you've got a different set of paints, most paint sets will have similar colours in them. You will need a fine brush if you're trying to do it in the way I am because I do work very detailed. Occasionally try and do an easier one now and then. That is, I do detail if I'm doing something for professional reasons, like I'm looking either to do it as a tutorial or for a print or painting I'm selling. But um, I do sometimes do more like doodle art paintings just for fun, just as a sort of relaxation. I might perhaps do one of those for YouTube perhaps just when you either demotivated or just want to give yourself a little bit of practice before you're doing something serious or you just want to have a little bit of a play then I will do sort of more non-serious less detailed pictures Let me know if you'd like to see me do something like that on YouTube. Or if you've got any other ideas of, the, of what you'd like to see me paint on YouTube. As I say, I do a wide range. I do insects, flowers, birds and UK wildlife. I do actually occasionally do other wildlife, but for selling purposes at the moment, at least I'm doing mainly UK wildlife. When I was younger, I used to absolutely love doing Birds of Prey, which I still do, and the big cats. I haven't done all of the big cats for a few years now. And I haven't done one in watercolours at all, so perhaps that would be a challenge for me. So it does take time doing this. It is just case of working my way around. It's quite a long video but um, I couldn't decide whether to speed this up a bit more than I already have or whether it was more useful to see it at slower place. Again, perhaps let me know if you've got an opinion on that. It's always useful to know what people think about these sort of things. So I'm putting these up for other people to either learn from or just enjoy watching the process. Some people just like 
watching other people paint and just enjoy enjoy that which is nothing wrong with that I do that sometimes if I see something that I perhaps wouldn't paint myself so my big hang up is landscapes it's um yeah I just don't know how to do landscapes so sort of. it's my target is to learn how to do landscapes at some point when I've got time perhaps next year I don't think I'm going to have time to focus at all on it this year but perhaps next year I'll have a focus on trying to learn how to do landscapes I don't think I've done any landscapes except for years except perhaps when I was at school and they used to make us do things like that but um, I don't think by choice I've done landscapes for years well I don't think I've done landscapes as choice ever put backgrounds to some of my animals and things which I suppose is a little bit of landscape but it's not like a um, mountain scene or anything like that so I'm just putting in a bit a little bit of shade in here um, as you can see with the in dancing blue and with a mix of in dancing blue and, and Windsor violet so I'm just putting some shading onto some of these flower parts now I've got them drawing a bit more The cooler cut and dark colours tend to step backwards. So where I've got that blue part that'll be won't be standing out by the time I put the details in further down. So starting now with some of the lower flowers and getting in the shapes, sort of blocking a bit, little bit off and doing the outlines just really working out where all the different bits are to begin to build up the shapes that make the flower and because I've got no concept of how these flowers are made up I am just looking at shapes and lines you know, sometimes you get like the easier flowers like, I don't know, daisies and um, sort of the five petal, five or six petal type flowers with the centre part, you know, the standard flower you would draw as a kid. But this, I say I have no real concept of how this goes together, so I am just looking at lines and shapes. Which is actually probably a better way to draw anyway because you'll tend to be more accurate if you're drawing something just by looking at lines and shapes rather than have a preconceived idea of what something should look like if you've got a preconceived idea of what something should look like it can have an influence on how you draw something so there was a lady that did the book Drawing on the Right Side of Your Brain, Betty Edwards, where you turned pictures upside down and just drew the lines. And when you turned it upside down, it looked quite a fairly accurate picture. I've used this, I did use this with top primary children, and I also did it once on a um, teacher inset when I was doing the art input for teachers and a lot of the, or on teaching assistants a lot of them said well no we can't draw definitely can't do that and I did use this section out of her book where I put a picture up on the whiteboard and upside down and got them to draw it and they didn't have any idea of what it's supposed to look like so they did just focus on the lines and then when I turned it upside down and they could see how accurate their picture was I know a lot of them were, were sort of amazed because they considered themselves people that couldn't draw. 
So carrying on down that lower part still, putting in the outlines and I'm adding a little bit more magenta on this one because they're a little bit more pinky, this section. As I said earlier, they actually look pinker in the on the screen when I'm editing than they did when I, on my tablet when I was copying the image. So if you're thinking that's not pink enough, that's the reason why. So just carefully going around those shapes, filling in, putting in colours, blocks of colour here. And hopefully you can see from the palettes exactly what I'm using. I don't think I've added any other colours there. There is the, mid, the, yellow, the yellowy colour in the bottom palette which I think is Burnt Sienna which I use in the be a bit later on so these really are a mixture of different colours to get the effect I do leave a Put a list in of all the paints and papers and brushes etc that I use in the description below if you're interested. But I would say if you want to have a go at this just use whatever you've got. I haven't been painting with watercolours that long, a couple of years now and when I started I did use the cheapest materials going as I've gone along and I've bought more stuff but um, initially when I started I wasn't actually sure whether I was going to get on with watercolours and so I didn't certainly didn't buy expensive stuff when I wasn't sure I was going to get along with it I just, the fact that it turned out to be something I preferred over the other mediums I've used in the past is beside the point <laughs> So I've now got lots of stuff because I found for me the watercolour works really well for being able to put a lot of detail in things. I do keep meaning to have a go at um, colour pencils as well because I've been told my style might suit colour pencils. But okay, it's just something I haven't had time to do. I've got, I've got plenty of colour pencils, but um, one of these days I'll get around to having a go at it. I do occasionally use the Ink Tense watercolour paint um, pencils, but that's more as a almost more as a watercolour than a pencil. As you can see on these bottom ones they've got some very fine um, vein lines and I am just referring to the reference photo when I draw those in. Adding a bit more outlining to some of those upper upper ones, more shading, a little bit more of the darker value up there. So it's just a case of going round as before, as you can see, I'm adding in the darker values and the lines and the markings. And it's just repeating the process you've seen me do on the other side. Just taking a lot of care, lots of looking at the reference photo. That's really important, is you're paying lots of attention to the reference photo. 
I'm just adding in a bit more magenta into the stalk stem and a little bit of the sap green because it is sort of like a greeny pinky colour and just touching up some of that green again sometimes as you add the more colour with the other stuff you need to the intensity of the green gets lost so you need to add a bit more of that if you're doing this yourself then you could either print out the photograph or like myself have it on a tablet or computer where you can zoom in to the details I find it particularly useful where you can zoom in really carefully to um, look at the details also with the amount of pictures I do I'd be wasting a lot of ink printing out pictures color pictures As I said, the blue colours, which are cooler, will like go into the depths, and the lighter, brighter colours will come forward. Just in the colours, as I look at the reference photo all the time. shading on those left hand side flowers obviously you need to let those dry before you do that just giving it that extra shape briefly while you're watching me do this part um, I do have a do a newsletter every couple of months I've got the next one due I think end of July if you are interested at all and get signing up for that then my sign up form subscription form is on my website which is linked in the description below it tends to be like a bloggy type of newsletter about what I'm up to as an artist and in general and also shop updates and occasional discounts codes so if you I say if you're interested in that at all the link is in the description below on my website so this flower in particular is very much a a mix of those blues and violets and magenta it sort of isn't very much switching between these colors to get the colors you need I haven't quite decided what type of background I'm going to add to this whether it's going to be just like a sky background or a green background or like a bokery effect like it is in the photograph I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with it yet tend to mostly do the backgrounds off video because they would just take too long otherwise and also often at this stage I normally leave my pictures a little while before I decide what I want to put behind them it's not like an immediate oh, I'm gonna do this but um, yeah I sort of think about it and then decide which one what I want to do with them Sometimes I know in advance um, the fox I did a couple fox head I did a couple of weeks back. I finished the fox since then, but um, I've still got to 
the background to work on, but I do know exactly what I'm doing with that now. And I've sort of got a wash, wash on and some masking fluid, taking out some of the background details but, uh, that I'm going to work over the top of. So I, sometimes I know exactly what I want to do with the backgrounds, but other ones like this, I don't at this stage know. So this side, right hand side in particular, seems to be a bit more pinky. Actually looks more pink in this video than it does when I looked to have the photo on my tablet, so I'm not quite sure why that is, but so my picture has is probably isn't quite as bright as it is on this, but perhaps that depends on your screen settings as to how pink it shows up. So I've got a few different, um, this picture from a few different angles. So I took several photos of it at the same time. So I've got the bee in different positions in different photographs. But I liked this composition overall when I was looking through them. It was a toss up between this one and one of the others, but I just went with this one in the end. I think it was my preferred preferred layout of where the bee what position where the bee was in against the flower. Just put a few more lines onto the stem. You probably can't see unless you've got uh, this on quite a big screen, but um, there are little markings on the stem. Just put a little bit more of that sap green on the stem, and I did do the bottom bit as well, which was out of, out of shot, but um, it was literally just running a bit of sap green down it. So now those are dry, I'm coming back to them to put the details on. So if you haven't realised what well, that's what I was doing, I'm filling in the colours, going and doing something else, and then once they're dry, coming back to add the details on top of things. This section in particular you can see the little um, stigma stamens it's the only part of the flower over the t overall that you can see this that in presumably it is in other areas otherwise you wouldn't have the bead there but um, it's not visible in most of the areas Carrying on putting the the markings on. In this picture I will be making into both prints and cards. I sell my work both on my website and also I belong to Pembrokeshire Craft Group that has some a gallery in Pembrokeshire and some temporary ones as well through the season where I sell my work. Cards cards in particular, I seem to sell quite a lot of, a lot of cards. And I have, obviously this is new, so it's not one I've had in print yet, but um, based on the others, I would have thought this one would be quite popular. due to do another card order soon anyway. So I'm going now really just added in the darkest shades 
fill in the odd bit there. I had a white bit there that, um, when I look carefully, wasn't. Just, so it's just pace of putting in the odd bit of shade in and some of the darker values. So now I've finished the flower, I'm moving on to the bee and I'm starting by putting in some lines of burnt sienna into the yellow areas and the wings. Burnt sienna is quite a good colour for putting a richer tones to the yellow and I'm also putting some of that into the end whitish bit because they're only lines um, I'm not giving that a wash of colour because I want it to stay, stay fairly pale so it's just going to be a mix of lines of yellow and sienna and there'll probably be some grey going into that so going around where I think there needs to be some of that burnt sienna there's quite a bit of it which is in this one I think because the quite sure whether the sun is catching the bee and therefore it's showing some of the different colours from what you normally see but there is quite a lot showing and there's some in the legs so I'm beginning to put those segments of the legs in as I go along this the legs of the bees are sort of segmented when you look closely I'm just beginning to put those markings in with a light colour and some of the brown burnt sienna shade. So you can see quite a lot of the legs in this picture, which you don't always with the photographs of the bee. Now putting the eyes in, it's at a funny angle, um, it looks from the picture that you can see both eyes. I'm taking that to be what it is. I'm not a sort of expert at anatomical for the bee, so I'm very much looking at, again, the lines and shapes I can see. Beginning to use that lamp black and Put in fur lines on the bee's body and legs, and it's a case of working your way around carefully as normal, looking at the reference photos. As again, you can see me putting in some sort of segments there. Sort of a Palettes went out of shot on this one because I couldn't zoom, zoom into the B enough otherwise. So taking the lines slightly into the yellow and putting those eye shapes in but leaving highlights on them. The upper parts of the legs in particular are quite dark. You can see the obviously the upper part of the legs are quite thick, but, uh, but they narrow to quite a small join. So with the fur, lots of overlapping 
following the direction I can see the fur going in the photographs and as I say overlapping it and change the directions vary the line length carefully putting in that wing wing line so I don't go over it really see too many colours in this on this bee. Sometimes you can see browns and blues sort of shades into the black but on this one it just looked black so I've just stuck with black on this. As you can see I'm doing lots of levels, lay, lots of layers of the hairlines to get the depth. As I said, I was going to take some of those dark lines into that tail end of the bee, but still keeping a fair amount of it light. Darkening down the legs, again that upper part there has got quite a big highlight on it. And putting the fur lines into the legs as well. Got quite furry legs, bees, or well, this type of bee anyway. So there's lots of different variations on bees. It's just a case of working around putting those details in. So add in a little bit of the brown back in. A bit more into the yellow and the end part. And make put a bit another layer of the cadmium yellow on, quite concentrated, and also still into that end bit. It's still keeping it a lot lighter than the rest of it, though. A bit more burnt sienna into the legs. everything else is putting is layering always layering when with, with things now going on to the wings I've got as I say I'm using a really fine brush for this which you would not need and there's four funny little segments at the end of the wing and then it's just a case of going around the lines that are drawn on it to get those vein lines that are on the wing you do need a fine brush for this though So these lines are already on the pencil drawing, so it's just a case of following them. Just 
can't see too much of the wings in this one because they've obviously where they're resting on the flower they've got their wings folded down and just touching up various areas There's not a lot more to go on this, just a bit more on the bee, the flower is finished. So I didn't particularly like what I just done there, I've made that a bit too dark, so I'm just lifting some of that. And in the process of lifting that I've got to just slightly adjust all the colours on the flowers again. was looking for little bits of extra detail to add the finishing touches Lots of little details on this bee. Decided at this stage I wasn't quite happy with the eyes, so I'm just doing a little bit of adjustment on those. bringing the black o black hairlines over that one in the foreground and we're almost at the end of this last minute few touches so if you enjoyed this video I would really appreciate it if you could press the like and if you haven't subscribed already then it'd be great if you did all helps my me and my channel to grow. Here's the finished picture and so I hope you really enjoyed it and hopefully see you again. The line drawing and the photograph is just coming up. Thank you very much for watching.